I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on the Spotlight Network, we're diving into the extraordinary life and groundbreaking achievements of Joe R. Eagleman. From battling bullies in a one-room schoolhouse to building artificial tornadoes that captured Hollywood's attention, his autobiography, Name Your Price, Second Edition, takes you on a journey through science, faith, and triumph. Plus, his fascinating exploration, How Weather Shapes Human Endeavors, uncovers the surprising ways weather impacts our lives, history, and even our economies. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing books. The links are below this interview. Joe, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Good to be here. I love the title of your autobiography, Name Your Price. How did you come up with that one and why did you name it that? Well, that came up as a result of uh, what the lawyers told me from uh, Hollywood when they uh, called and said that uh, uh, they would like for me to come to Hollywood for a trial. And at first I said, well, I'm busy, I'm teaching, I have research. And uh, so I turned them down the first time. And a week later, they called and said, name your price. And so I realized that I should respond to that. Wonderful, wonderful. But it, your artificial tornado would become a centerpiece of a Hollywood lawsuit, right? Yes. Uh, Universal Studios wanted to build a large attraction in Orlando. And uh, they looked around at who might have the rights to those. Well, they were sued by Volvo because Volvo had created a commercial for uh, the TV that they thought they had the rights. And then, uh, so when Universal Studios checked into it, they saw that uh, I had a book that explained how to uh, generate a, an artificial tornado uh, 10 years before. And so they wanted me there with my book to, to win their case, basically. Amazing, amazing. That's one of many, many exciting and intriguing chapters in your life. Eventually, you did see your invention featured in Universal Studios Orlando, correct? Yes, I uh, was going to go there with my family. And uh, my son said, well, why don't you get us free tickets? And my son-in-law laughed uh, as if that was ridiculous. And <laughs> So I said, well, okay, I'll see. And so I uh, wrote to Universal Studios and they had a record of my participating in generating, helping them generate that uh, display. And so they sent tickets for me, my wife, and our 10 grandkids and spouses and husbands. Amazing. Well, that must have been a very happy day that you will long remember, I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah, Some of the younger ones were not uh, as appreciative of it because it was rather terrifying the way they had it arranged. Absolutely. How did growing up on a farm influence your career? Obviously, you were probably um, acquainted with tornadoes. That's part of it, right? Y yes. Uh, at that time, there wasn't that much known about tornadoes. Uh, even in the textbooks when I started teaching meteorology, there there was very little or nothing on tornadoes. But growing up, growing up on the farm, uh, you knew that there were storms such as that and that they could uh, could strike without much warning at that time. Yeah. They still don't get much advance warning, but you get some, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Much more, yes. Yeah. 15 minutes is good. Yeah, enough to take cover. Yeah. Growing up, you were educated in a one room schoolhouse. That's quite unique. You don't hear of that much anymore. What was that experience like? Well, actually, it was pretty interesting. I remember in my lower grades, we would do our studies that we had, and then they would, uh, the teacher would engage the other students sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. So as a youngster, you could listen to see what the older 
kids were doing. And so you got a double double dose. So it was not all that bad. Yeah, you probably got to benefit from their knowledge and it became kind of a communal learning situation, I'd imagine, right? Yes. Yeah. Now you're one of 12 children. So you must have had some siblings in your class since it's a one-room schoolhouse, right? Yes, we walked about a mile and a half to school. My uh, uh, first grade, my older sister was in the eighth grade. And then I had another sister in uh, the fifth grade, and uh, I started first. And then I had a younger sister, three years younger, that started eventually. Amazing, amazing. Was it a plus or a minus being part of such a big family? I actually think it was a plus because you learn how to uh, get along with other people. You, yeah. You uh, encounter various kinds of of uh, circumstances that you have to uh, deal with, and so yeah, I think it's a plus to to be from a larger family. Yeah, I think so too. I think there's a lot of love. I think there's a lot of responsibility placed upon the children, depending on the birth order, and that's actually really great as well because it just makes you well rounded as a human being. And uh, growing up, we used to have families of 12, 10, 14. Uh, you don't see that anymore. Uh, no. It's become a, a passage, uh, but uh, it was how some families grew up, even when I was growing up. What made you decide to study atmospheric science and pursue a career in atmospheric science? Well, the, the weather was always uh, there as a, on the farm. We had a uh, a large barn, it was uh, 50 by 100 feet with a tin roof. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, milking cows and feeding hay in a thunderstorm with a tin roof, it's it's really, you hear every every little uh, wind and raindrop almost. And so the, the weather is there. It uh, was always there growing up. So... Uh, and it was just something that I always thought was interesting. You had a curiosity about it and you studied it and uh, really became a leader in the field, which was quite amazing. And one of your many accomplishments in your life has been your experiments ending up on Skylab. Tell us about that. Yes, before Skylab was launched, they uh, invited universities to uh, submit uh, proposals for studies on Skylab. So I uh, checked into the instruments that was were going to be flown, and one of them was a, a radiometer uh, that would uh, uh, see the transmission from the Earth. And a passive radiometer, it simply had a, a big antenna that pointed down to the Earth and uh, I realized that it might be sensitive to soil moisture, and that's a big factor in agriculture. And uh, so I designed an experiment where uh, I would send by, go out with my students into the field uh, when Skylab was going over a certain location. So we had test sites in Texas and Kansas. And uh, when Skylab was going to pass over and take the measurements for me, then we would be into the field uh, getting samples of, of uh, soil so that we could correlate the uh, what the sensors were seeing compared to moisture in the soil. And it turned out that uh, from Skylab, you could measure the top six inches of soil moisture. Amazing, amazing. You're a man of science. You're also a man of faith. Tell us what role faith played in your personal and professional journey. It's always been important to me. And so uh, um, I have tried to uh, maintain my faith, contribute to the church. Uh, and so the first thing when I arrived in, in Lawrence, they uh, gave me the, the high school class to teach. and. Uh, they were normal high school students, maybe a li little more even uh, mischievous. 
so that at the end of each class, the floor would be covered with uh, spit wads. <laughs> and uh, so one of them was so disruptive one day that I told him, uh, why don't you just leave if you aren't going to let anyone else learn anything? So he did. And uh, I thought I might be in trouble, but uh, no, I managed to survive that. Uh, 30 years later, when he came back to Lawrence for his mother's funeral, he met me in the hall. And the first thing he said was, Dr. Eagleman, I need to apologize to you. <laughs> so he he knew. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing how that came full circle for you telling him to take off if he's not going to contribute to three decades later, him coming to you and saying, doctor, thank you so much. And I needed to give you an apology. Um, so I think that's terrific. That's terrific. Your book, yes. How Weather Shapes Human Endeavors, is a fascinating book as well. What are some of the most surprising ways weather has impacted human history, in your opinion? Uh, well, it has, of course, the normal um, crop production is very influenced by precipitation, temperature, uh, sunlight. But uh, when you look into other ways that it has affected humans, you might not have thought about uh, using it in a military sense, but actually it has been used in a military sense. And in Vietnam War, the Ho Chi Minh Trail was a uh, very fairly small trail that was used by the Vietnamese to transport their supplies. And uh, so we used cloud seeding to try to muddy the trail and uh, just how effective that was. No one knows because we didn't have tests to see, but it has been tried in wars before and uh, uh, the Chinese and the uh, Soviet Union have cloud seeding programs, but we don't know too much about them, whether they're still very active or not, but uh, uh, that's been another aspect that people normally would not think about uh, doing anything about it. Absolutely, absolutely. You're a true Renaissance man, a scientist, an artist, and a musician, and there are now scholarships in your name as well, which I think is terrific. Tell us a little bit about the Joe Eagleman scholarships at the University of Kansas. Um, at my 80th birthday party, I invited uh, previous uh, students and family and friends, uh, and uh, I played with my grandkids. We had a band, and so we played music. And then one of my former students announced at, 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 uh, that he was establishing a scholarship fund and so uh, he started a scholarship fund in my name at the University of Kansas. And I felt very honored to uh, know that because normally that happens after a person is gone. It's really wonderful. You have huge shoes to fill uh, to uh, follow the path of Joe Eagleman. You have accomplished so much in life and you are still contributing. And it's absolutely wonderful talking with you today. The name of Dr. Joe Eagleman's book is Name Your Price, second edition. It takes you on a journey through science, faith, and triumph. He also has a fascinating book out there called How Weather Shapes Human Endeavors. It uncovers the surprising ways weather impacts our lives, our history, and even our economy. Joe, thank you so much for joining me here today on Spotlight. Well, thank you so much. Fascinating talking to you. Um, I wish I accomplished half of what you've accomplished in your life. And like I said, the contributions are still being made and still coming. And we thank you for that. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.